And I think this is a precursor to the judgment of God because we even see the pattern in the book of Revelation. I think Satan does some things because he's getting mad because he knows God's judgment is about ready to stop his stuff. And so he tries to mess up as much as he can what God's going to do. Now, Jesus tells us in Luke chapter 6. Now, that, see if this doesn't sound today. But why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? Why do you call me Lord? And you had to be so spiritual, you repeated it twice. Lord, Lord. Why, why, why do you call me that if you don't do what I've told you in my word? I told you these things were mine to do them this way. I even told you if you love me, you're going to do them. I, I made it a, not a, a thing to get saved. I made it because you got saved and you fell in love with me and I fell in love with you. And I said, listen, I'm almighty God. I set you free. Now, if you love me, just do what I tell you. And here you all call me Lord, Lord, but you'll not do the things that I say. Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show you what he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the floods arose and the storms beat vehemently against the house and could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. Guys, right there is where I'm wanting to get the body of Christ. To where the storms the devil looses against you will beat vehemently on you. They, they will come sometime in your life. They come on everybody. And the only difference is not the storm. The difference is who's left standing after the storm. But he who heard and did nothing is like a man who built his house on the earth without a foundation against which the stream beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. Now, here's the part because in several of my conversations, even when I say, well, you know, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. He said, well, aren't all, that, all the New Testament commandments, you know, the, the ones in the gospel? One of the things that we're going to have to ask is, who was Jesus? Who was Jesus? Is he a different God than the God of the Old Testament? That's what Marcion tried to interject into the church in the, in the second century and was thrown out by Polycarp and, and those in the, in the church in, in Antioch uh, claiming him to be the firstborn son of Satan. That, you know, the, the Torah and the God of the Old Testament was conquered by Jesus, and now we can set all that aside, and now we can just live by selected writings of the Apostle Paul. My God, doesn't that sound familiar? Even though it was rejected by the church, this one generation from the book of Acts, it was rejected. Augustine picked it up and embedded it into, the, into Christendom's theology. Not Christianity, Christendom. Uh, I make a grave difference on that. It, it, there's a lot of difference. And yet it permeates our theology today by a man that the second generation church considered in great grievous error they even gave him back all the money he gave with his concept. My problem is I think, I think we, are, we are embedded with Marcion's. We have all these people that say, but that's the Old Testament. Yeah, but the Old Testament said without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. The Old Testament said that Eve, out of your seed, I'm going to send a redeemer who the only thing he's going to be, the devil's going to be able to do to him is to bruise his heel. But Eve, he is going to crush his head. That's Old Testament. How about this? I'll make a new covenant with you, not like the old covenant I made. This time I'm writing my Torah on your hearts and, then that, and that you're going to be born again. You're going to have something new on the inside. I'm going to circumcise your heart. That's Old Testament. 
It was a promise of God that we see fulfilled in the New Testament. And the New Testament says, listen, what Messiah did, he is now empowering you to live the way he instructed you in his instructions, the Torah. But you couldn't live because you only had circumcision of the flesh when the whole time you needed circumcision of the heart to get it done. You see, we got to believe that Jesus is the God who walked with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that came in the flesh. Is Jesus the God who gave the Ten Commandments to Moses on Mount Sinai? Is he the God that breathed the first books, four books of the Bible to Moses, and all Moses did was write them down? Most Christians don't know that. God dictated the first four books to Moses. Moses finally got to write the fifth book because he was so worried that they were going to forget what he said in the first four. And so Deuteronomy or Devarim, words, he had to re-utter the words in his Reader's Digest version of what he thought was most important for that generation that did not see what God had done in Egypt. But that was breathed by Almighty God who came in the flesh and dwelt among us that looked to a Jewish people and said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And every Jew there knew exactly what the commandments were, even when we claim absolute ignorance and there is no excuse. So which God is he? You see, if you really answer that question, then the argument about the feast, the arguments about uh, what to eat, what not to eat, the arguments about the Sabbath, the arguments about Christmas and Easter, that all stops. Once you answer this one question, if Jesus is a separate God, then go ahead and start preaching what you really believe in your theology, that he is a God that conquered the God of the Old Testament, and you cease being biblical. Jesus said, when I am high and lifted up, you will see that I am. King James, he is italicized. It's not there. I am is one of the ways that you can pronounce the tetragrammaton, yod heh vav heh. And every Jew knew exactly what he meant. When you lift me up on the cross, you're going to see that I am. yod heh vav heh. And they did. In the, in the inscription that Pilate put up there, they saw as an anagram, yod heh vav heh. They told Pilate, change what you've written. I've written what I've written. He is Almighty God. He is El Shaddai. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is Yahweh Elohim, come in the flesh. And he's trying to get his people in this generation to walk in truth. The greatest part of our warfare I saw this on the internet, and I, I, I just couldn't resist it. You see, toward one another, we're supposed to be sheep, but when a devil shows up, you're supposed to be armed to the teeth. The part of our warfare and the realignment that God's calling us to do. If you notice the last two years, everything that I've been teaching is realignment. Get yourself back lined with the kingdom of God, the turnaround anointing. God is loosing a turnaround anointing to turn you around because if, you know, it, it is maddening to think that you can do the exact same things you were doing and get a different result. You, if you do it God's way, God's blessing is going to be on it. Because there's a storm coming. You got to have a foundation. You got to be entrenched into the ways of God that are immovable, that are established in Messiah. That when I am there and I am anchored in that, then I can endure. How can you endure a storm when you can't endure in our sermon? How can you endure a storm when the Bible says, this is of me, this isn't of me, and you go, go, but God, I like it, and I put your name on it. What kind of storm 
Is that going to hold you up again?